So we've talked about building applications with our builders. We've talked about building applications with the JavaScript API. And just there, we were talking about building applications with the runtime. But there's one application development environment that we've not covered yet. And that's because it's brand new to ArcGIS. And that's building applications with game engines. So why are game engines such a great development environment to build apps with? Well, we obviously get a premium rendering experience. We get a lot of cross-platform hardware support that we currently don't get with our technology. There's an extremely large developer community, and we've been hearing from that developer community that they want to get ArcGIS content into their game engines to improve the applications that they're building. But perhaps the most exciting thing for me as a developer are the other aspects of a game engine that it brings, a physics engine, animation, particle systems. They really allow you to build experiences that come alive. So what exactly are we doing? We're going to be building two plugins for Unity and Unreal Engine, two of the most popular game engines available today. We'll be targeting all XR experiences. These plugins will come with an API, so as a developer, you can interact with the, the uh, uh, functionality of ArcGIS. They'll come with some great samples and an SDK to make you productive. And in terms of ArcGIS functionality, you'll be able to work with raster tiles, imagery, elevation, scene layers with 3D objects and integrated meshes and point clouds. You've seen these this morning several times. Feature layers, of course, will be supported with points, lines, and polygons. But you'll also be able to get access to some of the other services that are available from ArcGIS, like geocoding and networking. Now, it, this is definitely a demonstration that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. And so I'd like to pass over with Adrian and Ferran from the Game Engine development team. Adrian? Thank you, Ewan. Ferran and I are really proud to represent our teams and show you for the first time two new products that are going to join the ArcGIS family. With these products, you'll be able to bring your GIS data to life using Unity or Unreal Engine. Let me show you how easy it is to create a GIS application using Unity. Let's first get familiar with the Unity editor. On the left, you have the hierarchy window that lists all the objects that will be considered when rendering your scene. At the bottom, you have the project uh, selection, where you can select any objects that you might want to add to your scene. On the right, you have the inspector, where you can look at or change properties of any object in your scene. And in the center, you have the viewport. The Access plugin comes with everything you need to build your JS application. Scripts, scene, images, etc. But if you don't want to write code, maybe because your demo is being streamed live to thousands of developers, for example, you might want to use prefabs instead and set your scene purely by using the UI. The first thing you will need to set is a camera position. As a developer, you're all familiar with global coordinates. But game engines only have local camera and local transformations. The plugin takes care of that, that uh, complexity and lets you set your camera the way you're used to or even faster by using geocoding. So I can, for example, enter Grand Canyon, geocode, and you see uh, my camera property being automatically updated. I'm going to change my base map to use imagery. And I found this really cool looking uh, geology data on uh, the Living Atlas. I'm just going to grab its URL and paste it into the prefab. I'm going to give it a name and add it as a layer in my scene. The plugin also supports local content. I'm now going to add the elevation contour lines of the Grand Canyon. I can review the layer and change the opacity to make sure I can still see the imagery uh, base map in the background. So I'm going to make my geology layer about 30% opaque and my contour layer, 50%. Now that my scene is configured, I'm ready to grab the prefab and add it to my hierarchy window to be able to be rendered by Unity. 
Pressing this run button is like pressing F5 in Visual Studio. It will compile and run my applications. And now you see it, without writing a single line of code, I have my first JS application running inside Unity. You can see in the background the green uh, and then the foreground the yellow uh, of the geology layer drape on top of the imagery. But one of the advantages of running inside the game engines is to be able to add visual effects. So to make this scene more realistic, I'm going to add a real looking sky and some fog in the background for a better blending of the imagery. Let me maximize the viewport so you can really enjoy this amazing looking scene. Another advantage of running inside game engines is that you can target devices that you cannot support right now with the ArcGIS platform. For example, I can make my application even more immersive by using my VR headset. Unity is taking care of the complexity of rendering my application inside my VR headset. All I have to do is look at this data being streamed live from ArcGIS Online and rendered at more than 60 frames per second inside my Oculus Rift S. I could spend a lot of time just looking at the sky or down at the Grand Canyon, where even if I can see the elevation contour lines, it just looks more real than ever. I just show you how I can, as a developer, quickly create a JS application in Unity, make it more visually impactful, and deploy it into a VR headset. Ferran, from our new R&D center in Barcelona, is going to show you what a 3D designer can do when associating JS and the visual power of the game engines. Ferran? Thank you, Adrian. You can tell amazing stories using GIS, but if you combine GIS data with the power of a game engine, you can take these stories to the next level. This is our second product, and I'm going to show you a simulation of the fires that took place in Australia using a real engine. This animation shows all the locations of the fires during the month of January. The fire locations are coming from a feature service in GIS Online. This may look like a typical JS uh, application that we could build today. But to understand the real impact on the fires, we can use the visual and storytelling capabilities of Unreal Engine. Let's start by changing the base map. The combination of using a imaginary base map and clouds generated by the game engine gives us a more realistic view. Let's, you can use Unreal Engine to attach particle systems to our GIS data to better represent them. In this case, Adding, adding a smoke coming from the exact location set in our feature service in IGS Online. Now you can have a better idea of how the impactful the fires were on a global scale. The smoke was visible from the space station and even covered a grand part of New Zealand. Moving closer to the Starland coast, we were able to see the devastating consequences of the fires, with the smoke blocking the sun for a large part of the country. Using the API, you can move the camera for the smooth camera animations, but at any time, you can interact with the scene. Finally, for a very immersive visualization of our data, we can move to the ground level and take a look to a single feature point. The true power of Unreal Engine comes from the ability to render high-quality walls. GIS is no longer bound to static maps. GIS can live in real time. And yes, now the room is on fire. Back to everyone. Thank you <clears throat> so I think you start to get an idea of the type of applications that when you combine a developer with a designer, it's going to be truly amazing what gets built with these plugins when working with ArcGIS. So your next question is probably, when is this going to be available? While the team is working towards a beta, we'll have a beta out in early summer, probably about the June timeframe. The beta program is open right now. If you go to the URL, you can sign up to the beta. And as soon as it's available, we'll be able to share that beta with you. And we're aiming to have a final version out to you by the end of the year.